name's Adam Height. I'm here with Beesman Manufacturing at the Smart Energy Building in Binghamton, New York. And we're going over the CM2 620 today for training purposes. We're here standing in front of the CM2 620, and this is the process we would take when we're uh, doing an annual service on cleaning the burner and the heat exchanger. First thing you're going to want to do is turn the power off to the boiler. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to come over here to the gas valve and you're going to disconnect the gas valve from the gas inlet so that when you swing the burner door open, it's no longer connected to the gas tray. Next thing you're going to want to do is there's six bolts on the CM2's front door here, the 620. You're going to loosen all these bolts, remove them completely, so then allowing the door to swing from left to right. As you can see when we started, we had already removed the two side panels, so we have plenty of room to work, and the front panels off the boiler themselves. So once I've swung the door open, I'm going to have complete access to the heat exchanger and burner tube inside. First thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that heat exchanger is nice and clean. If it's dirty and dusty, I'm going to want to hose it down with a nice hose of fresh water, let it run back through the condensate and out through the back of the boiler. The next thing I want to check is, is my burner tube dirty and dusty? If it is dirty and dusty, one of my recommendations as a basic service is to make sure the power is off to the unit, unplug your signal wire, now the fan will run in high fire when I turn back on the power, I turn the power back on, this is the door is open now, and then I can hit the burner tube lightly and use a vacuum to get the dust off of it. Once that process is complete, I can turn the unit back off, plug back in my signal wire so I don't forget to do it later, and then go to the next step of cleaning the electrodes and the uh, flame ionization rod. You can clean those lightly with emery cloth if they're dirty and dusty. You want to check their gapping. The gapping is all in the manual on, on the service page for igniters. These are the four screws you'll have to remove to remove the gas train from the uh, gas valve itself. Make sure your gas is off before you disconnect this power or this fitting here and then it'll swing back out of the way. At this installation there are two gas valves, one here and one on the right side of the boiler before the uh, regulators. Make sure they're off. So to remove the burner door you're going to loosen six bolts on the CM2620. One at the top of the heat exchanger, two on the side, one on the bottom, and two on the right side. Once all those bolts are completely removed, the burner door will swing off to the right. So one of the most common things I see on a job site is an external fault. That's either a low gas pressure switch or a low water cutoff or a high, high limit device. When that happens, you'll notice a couple things. So I'd like to simulate it so you know how to troubleshoot your way through it. We're going to simulate a low gas pressure switch. So what I'm going to do is actually shut off this gas valve. After a moment, we'll get an error code. So we've simulated the low gas pressure switch by closing the gas valve. The low pressure switch has now tripped out. One thing to notice, if I have an external fault, meaning low water cutoff, low, water, uh, low gas pressure, or a high limit fault, I'm going to lose power to my burner control if the boiler is wired properly. So I know it's an external fault based on my control not having power. If I go up to the main control, typically it would say, you know, error. So what we're going to do is once you open up the control, you touch the screen, you hit this little icon down here, that the, the red triangle for fault situation, and it's going to tell us a couple different things. So it says external safety device. So we know one of our external devices, whether it's a low water cutoff, gas pressure switch, or a high limit, has tripped. So let's go look at those things and figure out which one it was. It also is giving us a burner control fault because at this point, since we have an external failure, our burner control has no power, so we have no communication back to the main control, so it therefore is going to post an error as well. So once you fix your external control fault, your burner control fault will disappear and follow suit. First, what I'd want to do is acknowledge the faults. 
So I'm going to hit OK and acknowledge, hit OK again. Now they're still going to be there because we haven't rectified any of the faults. Once I reset my gas pressure switch, these will go away in time. At this point, I'll reset my gas pressure switch. So as you notice, we've set the re we've reset the gas pressure switch. We're now back into normal operation. You'll notice the little uh, fault icon is no longer on the screen. You can now see my burners firing, and also my main burner control unit down below has power to the display. So what I'd like to show you now is a little bit of functionality of the control. So if we go into the control simply by hitting the menu button up on the top, I can go and see a couple things. I can go into information, general, to basically see what my general information is. It's going to give me my boiler temperature, starts, hours, and a couple different things as far as my outputs, what's on and what's off. Um, I like going to the screen if I'm having issues because I can kind of see what's going on and get a picture before I really go into troubleshooting. If I go back a couple screens, I can go into service. This is important and it's all in the manuals. But for service level, I have to put in VI service. This is the same on every Beastman Cascade Control or, or GW6B throughout the entire line. So you never have to remember more than one code. If I'm having issues, I can go into actuator test. Right now all actuators are off. I can actually manually turn on my burner. Make sure it's going to start. If I'm having failures of not starting, I can go in there, see what happens, and maybe track down that trouble on what part of the combustion process it's happening at. There are a couple other things in here. Not a lot of it's used at this building, but we do have other outputs we can turn on and off to turn pumps on and off and uh, make sure everything is running and giving power where it should. If I'm ever on the phone with tech support, this is one thing that I would probably do. I would go into um, diagnosed and do a brief scan with the gentleman on tech support. As I scroll through here, I can tell the people on tech support what the numbers are and they'll be able to know what the boiler is set up for and maybe be able to help you troubleshoot it a little better. System coding, typically you're only going to do this with a Beastman professional on site and or maybe on the phone with tech support if you have to change things. Once I go into coding level 2, I then have to type in another password. That password is VI Expert. This will allow me to do more fine tuning of my burner and my settings on my boiler. And uh, again, you're only going to have to do this if you're uh, on, on the phone with tech support. They'll walk you through what you have to change. So as you can see, we've reset our low gas pressure switch, our screen went back to normal operation, and we no longer have a fault icon on the bottom of the screen indicating that there's an issue. I want to go through a little bit of the functionality of the control at this point to show you a little bit of what it's capable of doing and maybe help you do some uh, further troubleshooting in other instances. So I'm going to go up here and hit the menu button. I want to go in and look at the general information. So I go general. And this will give me a good overview of what's going on with the heating system at this time if I'm having issues. I like to go here first so I have a good picture of what I'm looking at. As you can see on this screen, we have burner starts, burner run hours, and those two things can become pretty important at some point along troubleshooting or servicing the boiler and deciding when to do it. I'm going to go back two screens by using the back arrow. If I have to go into service, I'm going to go service, and at this point it's going to prompt me to put in a password, and that password for the first level is VI service. bring me into my first level. Now here on the screen you can see diagnosis, actuator test. I like the actuator test because it allows me to go in, I can manually turn on my burner and make sure the burner is firing. I can at this point check my gas pressure and my combustion by driving the burner through different stages of combustion as well. If I go back to this screen, I can go into my fault history. What has my fault history been? What kind of issues have I been experiencing? Can I go in 
and get those things rectified. Once I fix the issue or think I've fixed the issue, I usually like to reset my fault history so that I know from this day forth if I'm having any more issues, whether it's the same issue or a new issue, it'll give me that information. So now I have no more fault history. I go back a screen. If I wanted to, I could go into system coding. Now we've already unlocked coding level one, but if I have to go into coding level two, I do have to type in a new password, and that's VI Expert. This will bring me into for deeper coding. I would typically only do this if a Vsmint service tech was on site or I was on the phone with tech support and they were requesting me to go into the uh, coding level so we can make some adjustments to make the burner run better. So that concludes the tutorial on the control. It also concludes the service on the boiler. Again, annually, we're going to want to check the boiler and the air intake to make sure there's no dust or dirt in it. If there is dust and dirt in it, at that point, we would want to continue the service, maybe open up the heat exchanger and do a full service on the unit. Other than that, if it's in good shape, it's running, I would say you could leave it alone for another year. Again, my name's Adam Height, and you can reach us at Beachman Manufacturing if you have any further questions.